Hello, so we've been looking at causation um, within criminal law and the idea of a nervous actus intervenience, which basically is a new intervening act which steps in and thereby excuses the defendant from all criminal liability um, because the new act is what has produced the result, not the defendant's action. And this follows from the general principle that we established from Cheshire 1991, which is that the defendant's act has to be an operating and substantial cause um, of the result for the defendant to be held liable beyond reasonable doubt I should add. So we've already looked at natural um, intervention acts of God, how they can be nervous actus intervenience. The second type of um, new intervening act is third party interventions. Now the central idea here is that if you have a third party and they act in a free voluntary and informed manner then yes that is a nervous actus intervening so i have two cases to uh, demonstrate this the first one is r and latif 1996 now essentially what happens is is a man wants to import drugs from pakistan and um he actually is working in cahoots with a custom officer but doesn't realize that it's a custom officer he's working with or there's some um, not realizing that he has agreed with the police informant the custom also helps to bring um, drugs into the country however the custom officers were charged instead of the defendant um, because they acted freely voluntarily and fully informed and what the judgment says is the free, deliberate and informed intervention of the second person, i.e. the custom officer, who intends to exploit the situation created by the first, so the situation of importing drugs created by the defendant, but is not acting in concert with him, um, is held to relieve the first actor of all criminal li uh, responsibility. Actually, it was the customs um, officers who were in trouble in this case. Now, the second, more clearer case, one I prefer, is also the famous case, is R and Paget, 1983. Now, what happened is defendant was in this tower block and he was pointing his gun at police. Now, to protect himself, he used his 16-year-old pregnant girlfriend as a human shield. Now, the police... Um, the police shot um, in that direction, but they ended up shooting her. And I think the girlfriend died, not just injured. Um, yeah, she dies. So the question they had to ask, was the police shot a free, voluntary and informed act? Or was there any kind of defense or anything the police could say to stop them from being held criminally liable instead of the defendant in the first place? And what it was held is that the police do not act in a voluntary way because they were on duty and it was instinctive for them to do it. They were executing a legal duty. They were not free for this reason because they were under their legal duty. Um, it was not informed because also it was dark so they couldn't really see who they were shooting and it was instinctive. So for this reason, um, the police weren't held um, to break the chain of causation. So examples of where a free, informed and a voluntary act will not break the chain of causation is where um, the third party lacks capacity because um, they're not free, basically, either through age or mental capacity, etc. The second is if they have a lack of mens rea, so they're unaware of their harm um, that they're causing. So in Hasted and Chief Constable of Derbyshire 2000, um, this uh, mother is pushed, um, but she is carrying a baby who she drops and the baby is injured. But she's not to be held responsible for the baby's um, injury. She was not a nervous actor's intervening because um, she did not act freely. She was forced to have the action of falling because she was pushed. And then you have defences such as if police are executing a legal duty, as we saw in R and Pajit. But otherwise, third-party interventions would count as a novice actus intervenience.